this is all about. Now, the one thing that I feel, you know, the biggest stories that I would do, uh, think, were the development stories that we did in the initial years, uh, be it the Gujarat earthquake or the tsunami in Tamil Nadu. And these are the kind of, you know, roles that we play. I have also the fact, I also have this uh, advantage that, you know, television journalism taught me a lot. I don't say that I taught television, but I learned a lot during this career as a television journalist because I got exposure to working in 11 states for the elections and, you know, for other activities. And that widened my horizon, widened my thought process that I could be able to be compatible with these people in different states and understand what India is all about and what lives of people are all about. So, sir, which are the states that you have actually worked in? See, uh, as editor South and NewsX, uh, and even Z News being the only reporter in the South, the five southern states were my forte. I may very proudly say that because I worked in Andhra, Telangana, Karnataka, Kerala, and uh, Tamil Nadu, being home. And apart from that, I've had to travel to Maharashtra, travel to Rajasthan, travel to Chhattisgarh for elections, went to Delhi for elections. And, you know, these are the kind of experiences which television gave me an opportunity to learn from. And that's been a privilege where I feel that, you know, my education didn't stop when I moved out of college. My education actually started when I went into television journalism. So, sir, you left Genius after 2014, right? Yeah. So, what was the reason of you leaving Genius? Well, see, I left uh, television in 2014 from NewsX. I was earlier with Z okay. and then uh, NewsX. Uh, I felt, you know, what freedom that we enjoyed as a television journalist. Because in the initial years of television, it was reporter-driven uh, stories, reporter-driven bulletins, reporter-driven uh, programs that were uh, thick. Gradually, I have seen the shift is now to a scenario where today's television, the reporter is only a bite collector and nothing beyond that. At the best, he can be a reporter who can only give a nuance from the ground. But the entire control is with the desk now, which I felt was not what I would want to be because, you know, being an independent mind as a journalist, I would rather have scope where my own thought process would have the same weightage and not a particular ideology or a thought process which is imposed on me. So, sir, when we are talking about the ideologies and when we are talking about the desk and how media is working, do you think that the new journalists who are coming up nowadays, do yeah. they have enough platform to work and uh, work according to their own will? Well, certainly, this is something where you know, the hope that keeps all of us going. 2014 to 2018, I feel, was one of the worst phases in television news where we saw the decline. And, you know, it's not just me saying it. The data shows it. The fact that the viewership percentage of television news in Hindi, English and other regional uh, languages has declined in these last four years to a level where even survival for many channels has become a huge challenge. And today when we see that this is something which people are introspecting, you know, the, the journalists like me or others who are introspecting as to what better can be done. The only thing that can be done better is better content. And once you give better content, you will get your eyeballs back, you will get your viewers back, and that is what will happen in the coming years. So, sir, when we are talking about the viewership, so when we are talking about the viewership, uh, do you think that if we are going to provide them the contents that they want, as in their problem from TV, if we are trying to show that, do you think that the viewership? Will Certainly. See, the fact is, today's television news is politics-centric. And if you ask the common man on the streets, what's his connect with politics, it's maybe once in five years go out and vote. People don't go and, you know, work for political parties, they don't volunteer. You have to pay. So this huge disconnect between the people and politics is where television news is losing out. The day television news starts focusing on the people and not on politics, you will find that people will want to lap up that kind of news. Oh, well, uh, my experience with Elka were very fine. Unfortunately, 
the magazine had to shut down but uh, it was something which opened a very new aspect as i said that i learned on the thing i mean investigative journalism was never a part of my career in uh, television except for one or two stories but this was something which made me day in and day out look into the anomalies look into the faults of the government highlighted how power machinery bureaucracy and politicians were you know coming together to loot india if i can say that and that's what telka gave me an opportunity to write about this the exposure that we did on the land grab of the elephant corridor and these kind of stories which we were able to bring out as a telka team i won't say it was individual but as a telka team we were certainly able to be incisive be precise and be able to make questions relevant and that's something which i enjoyed about western with telka though it was uh, about a year and a half kind of thing. think about the paid news and the fake news that is uh, circulating across india nowadays see fake news is a huge challenge paid news certainly is one challenge to which people are open about it you know because if as a journalist i go out and write a story which is more of a public relation exercise or more of a biased opinion people see through it we should not assume that the reader or the viewer is stupid they will be able to uh, decipher my writing and be able to tell me that this is paid or this is an honest opinion but in case of fake news it's very dangerous fake news is something which can actually destroy publications can destroy careers and destroy a lot of people's uh, thing and build false uh, prerogatives so that's something which is a bigger challenge is reason why we are seeing that today organizations even channels or uh, publications are setting up fake news desk to bust because today's information in the it world is so open and it pours in from all sides all corners that we are unable to decipher which is fake which is right and that is a huge challenge today that we see that fake news has to be countered at inception and not that after you've carried a story and you tender an apology so uh, when we are talking about fake news there is this entire concept of uh, circulating the propaganda yeah right uh, when uh, you see there are some journalists not mentioning the name shout shout and always blame one religion or one sect or one particular you know any particular section who is weaker section or because uh, yeah. minorities yeah. so you can see that they are actually propagating how do you think well, well see very clearly the fact is who will you attack if you want to carry out a propaganda or a fake news not somebody stronger than you you will choose which is a easier uh, target the easier target is a uh, weaker sect it could be a gender weaker by gender or weaker by community weaker by political uh, sphere or somebody who's otherwise unable to retaliate and that's where we find that these pay, uh, fake news factories which run and it's shocking to say that political parties employ such kind of people who generate these fake news uh, in these fake news factories and there's only agenda is if i can't be smarter than you let me put down the other person and with that is the motto with which they work they create trouble if you look at you know the kind of controversy which is being spoken about ar rahman's daughter for just wearing a hijab i mean how does it concern anybody if she could wear a hijab or not wear a hijab it doesn't make anyone mm, that would kind of think the same thing they would target a karina kapoor khan because she started adding a khan to her name and then you say that you know you can't have this and you can't you're not falling and there are such people who attack for no reason on either side it i'm not saying that it would be one it could be be it the muslim clergy who will be vocal or you would find the hindu activists who certainly want to be vocal and you know dominate i mean let's understand one thing indians are not your political tools i have the right to live i have the right to eat what i want to eat i have the right to behave the way i want to behave and i also have a right to write what i want to write 
And so when we are talking about political party, which political party are you somewhere in trying to be? Know that we should be not, we should be unbiased. See, more than political party, I feel that you know it's the good people in all parties that you need to be inclined with or supporting kind of a thing. As a journalist, let me tell you, there is no hundred percent clean journalist in this world. Right. Everybody has a heart and everybody has a soft corner for somebody. Be it an ideology or be it people and all that kind of thing. I very strongly feel that if you feel that there is somebody, some individual in any party, you may not like the party, but if the individual is good, please support him. And that's the kind of thing. I mean, I'll give you an example of MLA Vijay Kumar, who was a Jayanagar MLA who passed away. I mean, he was the gem of a person who actually took care of everybody in his constituency, though he belonged to the BJP. That's not the criteria. But individuals, only when good individuals get supported, you will find that the political systems will get better. Okay. Okay. So, so, when I'm talking about the political parties, do you think any political party which is better than all the other political parties at this particular point? Mm -hmm. See, at the moment, uh, I feel an Amadmi party which has worked in Delhi certainly has done good job, commendable job in terms of the thing because it's nearly five years and you've seen them actually working on the ground. And politicians need to understand that you need to connect with people if you want to succeed. You have to do micromanagement. And let me tell you, if not anything else, AAP has been able to bring a certain change in other political parties as well as to how to deal with people. And that, I think, so is a bigger contribution than anything else. Sir, so have you ever realized, when we are talking about Aam Aadmi Party, we always have this conception that Aam Aadmi Party is somewhere with, uh, inclined towards the left ideology, where well, mm. they don't... Uh, you know, they don't consider the religion, yeah. the sex, anything. Yeah. The only thing they consider is the yeah. upliftment of the people, yeah. right? Similarly, when we are talking about journalism, and if you are saying that you like Aam Aadmi Party, somewhere do you feel that people call you that, okay, you are a leftist, you are a liftard, you are an aftard, and all this? It, it makes no difference. You can call anything that you want. And, you know, the abuses on Twitter and social media are don't matter at all. Let them call anything. The fact is, you know, simple thing in life is, why?